Good morning, it's actually red. And even though it appears white as the sun disk on my screen here, at least I'm not sure what, how it appears on yours. My eyes are seeing a red sun rising. Not a red sky, but a red sun. It's really nice. Here's a, a dad and his boy. He has a fishing line and he's taking his sunrise pictures. Those experiences are great. So formative for children and also so fulfilling for parents introduce their children to the beauties of nature to the challenges of climbing a tree to noticing the birds and all the critters and the plants and all this so you know this spot Two very, very powerful readings today, pivotal readings in the history of all the biblical history, our history, as the biblical history is our history, our history in the sense that it's humankind's history. It catches so many notes coming from the human heart notes of hope and also notes of sadness and despair and suffering notes of joy celebration confidence it scans the human heart the human story relationships struggles and delights and we're going to be jumping away from jeremiah after today Although, when you have time, when we're done here, another moment, I recommend that you move on to the next chapter, chapter 32, and read the story. In a certain sense, it, it expresses the practical things that come from today's reading, which are so pivotal. So, uh, the political context is very difficult, because the Babylonians are going to destroy Jerusalem, and set it on fire and they're going to take the people into exile so that's just about to happen and after all Jeremiah's very powerful and passionate appeals for trusting God and for conversion with very strong condemning words here, these are words of extraordinary hope for the future. Not words of condemnation, words of hope. And this is the great tension, you know, like music is a tension between sounds and silence. And the electricity up here in these poles, I don't see any right now. <laughs> Just a moment ago, there were a bunch of them in view. They're passing up here, actually I can see them now. They're up here in this gap between these two hills, but. I'm not going to try to focus in there for you. And the electricity works with tension. It's a high tension, right? So much of nature works. The universe is held together with different tensions. And we have this great tension also between fear and hope. They're kind of the guardrails on the stairs going up into the, the future, what we don't control. And this great note of hope is, I will make a new covenant with you. I will blot out all your sins. And in order for you to fulfill the new covenant, you get a new heart. And for Jeremiah, this is so real and so serious that in the next chapter, even though Jerusalem is going up in smoke, the Babylonians have come in, the people are going into exile. He's in prison. 
in the like he's in, he's in kind of house arrest in the in the royal in the royal and in, in the in the palace in the in the stronghold of the of the king and he buys a house and he pays for it in Anatoth, his native village two and a half miles northeast of Jerusalem and he goes through all the formalities of it and it's like the prophets so many other of the prophets and their deeds their deeds are eloquent about the future they show the people what's going to happen and this is oftentimes why people think prophets are primarily to tell the future but actually they're spokespeople for God and that's the nature of prophet just like an angel isn't the nature of the being of the celestial being it's the name based on the fact that some of them were sent as messengers to announce but an angel isn't just a messenger an angel is a spiritual being of extraordinary brilliance and intelligence but we call them messengers it's just like a handle for them you know that's how we call them and we call prophets we think about the future but actually their their key mission wow there we got a lovely purple hern their key mission is to speak for god so the promise of a new heart and i think it was in the next chapter i saw a beautiful text today about the people would have one heart. I think that's in chapter 32 also. The people would be given one heart. And you know, I thought, wow, I hadn't made the connection before, but that's kind of what we see in the Acts of the Apostles after Pentecost or before Pentecost, that they were praying together with one heart and one soul. So this is the vocabulary of the new kingdom. And if we connect all this with what we read about Caesarea Philippi, which is up at Mount Hermon, which we right now can't see, I don't think, or maybe I can see a little bit of it. But again, I'm not even going to try to focus in. Uh, you know, I think I can, but I saw it last night when I was swimming. I saw it yesterday morning when I was swimming. This morning it wasn't visible because of all the haze. So I'm sure it's still there. And at the foot of Mount Hermon, we have Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, up uh, there. And Jesus is doing like an opinion poll, like, what do the people say I am? And then, who do you say I am? And then Peter says, gives the answer, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, it wasn't flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. Yeah. There you have a little bit of the new heart, the heart that can perceive reality. And also a heart that's going to be, Peter's going to need a new heart because then he's going to try to stop Jesus going down the path of suffering or going up the path of suffering up to Calvary. Heaven forbid. Fall in line behind me. Peter, don't be opposed to me, adversarial. I was impressed last night, it's a very long commentary of our friend from Australia, the gospel, the daily gospel exegesis, also called the logical Bible commentary. And uh, it's a very, very complete one last night. I'm really impressed by a number of insights. It's rather long. If you're interested in it, it's worthwhile to get more biblical depth background into the imagery. For example, if you want to understand the keys that Jesus gives to Peter, you have to read Isaiah 22, when Shebna has behaved rather arrogantly and, and above the human frailty level and hewn himself a fantastic tomb. You know, that's also counter to the pious Jewish burial. Have you ever been at a Jewish burial? 
they bury the body completely in the earth directly, no coffin. And that's so powerful and I think that's so meaningful. But this guy had built a tomb. And anyway, he's being deposed and his successor is being named. And it's ex word for word, basically, the vocabulary there is the same vocabulary Jesus uses to illustrate Peter's role. It's worthwhile telling that it's also in the, uh, there are interesting uh, points there in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, chapter 3. We won't go into it now. But lots of biblical background always to the, to the story that you read at any given moment. Because the whole Bible is one work. It's amazing. And to accept Peter, then, we also need a new heart because Peter needs a new heart to accept Jesus' path. A new heart that's marked by compassion, by humility, by meekness, being a peacemaker, not a violent person. But also a heart of, of uh, it's not putting its weight in possessions, uh, in pleasure indulgence, in power and independence. And there we see John in front of Peter at the tomb, and he lets Peter in first, even though he was the one that was there at the burial. Even though he's so mystical and so close to Jesus, he was at Calvary, he lets Peter in first. And we see it in Paul as well, and he calls him Kephas, the precise word that Jesus uses at, in, in uh, not in the Greek text, in, the, in what, the way Jesus would have spoken to them, the rock, Kephas. Well, we get that kind of effect on the sky again with the sun is going to disappear. It should be probably time for me to stop because it's gone over time, really. So we let, let's leave it like that. But there's a whole lot there, a whole lot of background, a whole lot of, of um, implications. And may we all have the new heart that's needed for the renewal of our world as well. Times of great chaos and, and times of violence and arrogance and such a need for humility and goodness and patience in our families, in our kitchens, in politics, in relationships between peoples, nations. God bless you. There you have Mount Arbel, Southern Cliffs above. And now I'll give you one last look there at this beautiful sunrise. Amazing sky. God bless you. See you later, alligators.